Hello beautiful, soulful woman and welcome to another episode of the Empowered Woman podcast. This is episode 13 so all the show notes can be found at blairiana.com forward slash 13 and today we're doing something a little bit exciting and different. Not only am I recording this podcast on audio which you're all very very used to but I'm also recording it on video at the same time. So if you're wanting the full immersive Blairiana experience and you're used to listening to me on iTunes or SoundCloud be sure to come over to YouTube as well and subscribe to my channel so you can also connect with me in this way which I would absolutely love. So today we are talking about something that I didn't quite realize was so paramount for so many women. I recently put a shout out to my online community, pretty much just wanting to connect. (laughs) I was in that space where I just wanted, I just wanted to have real conversations with real women. I had kind of had my fill of a lot of the superficial connections that I was experiencing and witnessing particularly on social media and I just wanted to talk about what was real and I wanted to be of service and so I put the shout out pretty much saying who wants to get on a call with me (laughs) and have a free 15 minute call because not only did I want to connect but I also wanted to gain more of an understanding of what topics and struggles are relevant to my audience so that I can do what I'm doing right now which is create content that is actually of deep service to you and is beneficial to where you are right now and so a lot of women applied for one of those calls and I had some beautiful beautiful conversations and what really struck me was that One of the most common questions that these women had, the ones that I spoke with, was how do I change without hurting the ones I love? And so I'm going to be talking about this in this episode today because I didn't quite realize how big this was uh, for so many women. And I was surprised, but also not surprised, (laughs) when it came up on um, in a few of these conversations. So I'm going to share with you the same advice and suggestions and type of clarity that I offered to the women on these calls so that you too can begin to break through this fear of leaving someone behind or someone else getting hurt by you stepping into your full self, by you investing in yourself, by you prioritizing your own self. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to address here is the how we language our problems to ourselves says so much, which is why I always encourage my clients to develop a deeper understanding of their own internal dialogue, because how we choose to structure and language our concerns to ourselves really do say so much. So the particular, whenever a client speaks to me, I really hear how they're saying, but also the deeper energetic message that's coming through. But the structure of the question was, how do I change without hurting those I love? And how that is phrased, and perhaps you say this to yourself in this exact form or in a slight variation, but how we say things to ourselves is really, really powerful. Our body hears everything we say. And so by simply saying, how do I change without hurting those I love, implies that through the very act of changing, it is an inadvertent fact, it is an inevitability that you are going to cause harm to those you love. So the very fact that the languaging around this issue is, how do I change without hurting those I love, says that on a deep level, or perhaps even a more surface level that you're aware of, it is saying that through the very act of you changing, you immediately impact in a negative way those that are closest to you. And if you are believing this, if you are believing that as soon as you create any kind of change in your life, whether that's starting a business or you know, putting priority on your health or wanting to shift some excess weight or whether it's looking at a career change or what, or even just your general personal development, wanting to gain a deeper connection to yourself, wanting to form a more loving bond with yourself. The very fact that that change, that whatever it is, is different to how you are right now, implies that it is inescapable, that it will cause harm to another person. And this is a rampant, fear that happens for so many women 
it's this idea that if you get anything, if you gain anything for yourself, whether that's love or abundance or fulfillment or connection, then you are taking it from someone else. That some other finite source of love, abundance, connection, this finite resource by you taking from that small pool means that you have robbed someone else's opportunity to have that love, abundance or connection. And so if you think about it, odds are you probably don't want to hurt the ones you love. I'm going to go ahead and take a guess there and say that you don't want to hurt those you love. And so by the very fact that there is this belief, is it any wonder that you're finding it so hard to change? Is it any wonder that you are struggling to hold on to those commitments that you set for yourself, that you are struggling to continue to go to the gym if that's what you're wanting to do, or you're struggling to put yourself out there in business, or you're struggling to hold on to finances when you begin to bring in more money than what you're used to or what your partner's used to or what has been the kind of set standard for how you've been living your life? Is it any wonder that you are finding it so hard to change? If there is a belief that says, if I change, I'm going to hurt those I love because that's the last thing you want. So of course it's going to be hard to change because you are fighting against the very nature of who you are, which is a loving, open-hearted, sensitive, gentle human being that just wants to express love. You are a being of love. You're not here to cause harm to anyone else. You are here to express light. You are here to have connection. You are here to experience fulfillment and love on the deepest level. And so if you think that doing that in any way, shape or form is going to take from someone else, especially someone that you love, then you are already stopping the change from happening before you've even taken steps to bring it into your reality. Because the last thing you want to do is hurt someone you love. And so in order to make change even possible, even conceivable for you, before you start taking any action in the direction that you want to change, we need to balance out this perception that you changing is going to cause harm to those that you love. And so this is a conversation that I had um, with a few women last week when I was on these free calls where in 15 minutes I helped them break through these patterns so that they actually could begin to move in the direction of change that they were so deeply desiring and completely deserving of as well. And so here's my suggestion to you if you really, really struggle with this as well. I'm going to get you to get a piece of paper. <laughs> First step, piece of paper. <laughs> We're going to keep this simple. And because in order for you to have a belief, in order for you to have any negative belief towards yourself, towards someone else, towards your circumstances, towards life in general, or possibility or change, in order for you to have a negative belief, it essentially means that on the spectrum of belief, your pendulum has swung excessively in the wrong direction. If you think of a belief as having a positive side and a negative side, because everything has polarity, everything's in duality. If you think of it as being on a 100% spectrum and you've got 100% positive belief on one end and 100% negative belief on one end, in order for you to have a negative belief, it means that your perception of that idea has swung to the opposing side of where you want it to be in order for you to be moving forward in the way that you want to move forward. And so what we need to do is help swing the pendulum back even to 51% is enough to begin to create change, to make things significantly easier for you. Just like being at 51% in the negative is going to be really, really difficult to create change, even by that variation of 1%, because the percentage definitely matters, but it's the fact that it's one way over that 50% mark, that's where you get into trouble. That's where things become very difficult. And that's where you feel like you're fighting against yourself. And it's one step forward, two steps back every time you want to create real change. And so what we need to do is balance out the perception. Because here's the beautiful, beautiful things about our brains. <laughs> the beautiful, very painful, difficult part about our gorgeous little structure of the brain is that it is a fact finder. It is designed as a gigantic filtration system sitting on top of your head, on top of your neck. And so your brain is designed to seek out in its environment evidence that its belief systems are valid. So if you have a belief system that says that in order for me to change, I'm going to hurt those I love, 
your brain instantly sets your mind's filtration system to look for evidence of that belief being real. And this goes for every single belief that we have. So say for example, um, when I work with single women that are really struggling to attract a higher quality of love into their life, one thing that they tend to be saying to themselves often is there aren't any good men left. And because that's a belief system that's running, their filtration system is only looking in their environment for evidence of there being no good men left. So what happens is they're filtering out the good men that are actually available, the good men that are coming in and out of their life every day, because their mind is locked on one particular reality. It's jarred on one setting, which says there are no good men left. And so of course, because there are no good men left, that's the reality that they're drawing towards them. They keep getting assholes or emotionally unavailable men or players. That's the type of men that they're attracting because their mind is filtered out and denying the possibility that the opposite could exist. The exact same is true for this belief system that we're looking at right now. And so if the belief system is that as soon as you change, you're going to hurt the ones you love, your mind is instantly set to look for examples of that. Okay, and so what we want to do is begin to challenge the perception. We want to jolt the filtration system to get it to naturally widen and gently widen its capacity for seeing a different reality being possible. And that's one of the first steps to creating change. Rather than you having to swim against your own current, we're wanting to shift the perception that the opposite of what you're wanting, which is causing harm to those that you love, we're wanting to deny that as being an irrefutable fact, which is what a belief system is. When we have a belief system, it is 100% black and white. So we're wanting to challenge that just enough to make it gray, just enough to tip it over to that 51% in the favor of it, it being a positive belief of you being able to change without harming those that you care about. That's, that's the window of change that we're wanting to create. Then you can begin to take conscious action and direction towards what you want, whether that's to start up your own business, whether that's to you know meet the man of your dreams, whether that's to start a family or whatever, <laughs> whatever, like insert your desire here is essentially the message that I'm getting at. And so we're wanting to challenge the belief. So here's what I'm gonna get you to do. And this is what I um, suggested as a bit of home support for one of the women that I had these free calls with is I got her to get a piece of paper and I want you to begin to list out 20, minimum 20, minimum of 20 benefits that your loved ones receive as a, as a direct result of you creating the change that you're wanting to create. So say, for example, that you are a busy mama and you're really wanting to take better care of yourself. You know that it's important cognitively. You can list all the reasons why it's important for you to take care of yourself, but that barrier keeps getting in the way. You feel like you will be a lesser mum. You feel like you will not be taking care of your children as well if you are putting yourself further up the priority list. So, for example, your list of 20 might include you'll be less reactive if you take care of yourself. So you won't be arguing as much with your partner in front of your kids, or you won't be yelling at them as much, or you'll be more present and grounded so that when you are playing with them, then you are fully there and they get to experience the quality of your presence, which trust me, children can feel. They can feel when we're there and when we're not there. And so, and a lot of humans, <laughs> adults can too. <laughs> just a word of caution around your more adult loved ones as well. And so by being able to write out a list of 20, it begins to challenge the existing belief system that it's all one way, that it's all negative, or that there's only a small, small, small portion of good compared to the inherent negative. Because that's what the negative belief is. That is what the barrier is to creating change when you feel like it will take from someone that you love. Is that you perceive, and this is all perception, you perceive that the pile of negatives outweigh the positives. That there is more to lose than there is to gain by you having the change that you want to create in your own life. And so by just writing out a minimum of 20 begins to balance out that scale. It begins to balance out the negative with the positive 
And because of that, because of creating space for that and sitting down and doing that, you are directly challenging your own belief system. The belief system being that if you uh, change, then you will harm the ones that you love or that it's not possible to change without inadvertently or directly harming those that you care about emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, what have you. And so by you writing out a minimum of 20 ways that they directly benefit from the change that you are wanting to create, and the more specific you can get with this, the better. So if you have a very particular change in mind that you're wanting to create, starting a business, shedding excess weight, finding, finding your perfect partner, whatever the change is, or even just connecting more deeply with yourself. Perhaps it's all about awakening your sensuality or coming back home to yourself as a woman. Perhaps that's the change you're wanting to create. It may not be a directly external change, but more of an internal one. Thinking about all the ways that that benefits the ones that you love. And the more specific you can be with the change and the more specific you can be with the people in your mind that you think are going to be negatively impacted, the more you're going to get out of doing this exercise. So I'd really, really encourage you to do this because what it does is it challenges your mind on its existing belief. And as soon as you challenge a belief system, it begins to collapse on itself. It begins to not be as deeply lodged into our subconscious or into our into our filtration system it jolts the filtration system and gets it to begin to look at life through a different lens it begins to get you to see and seek out possibilities that are more in line with the positive change that you want rather than shutting down your ability to accept and receive those because your mind is looking in the opposing direction it's only seeing the negative it's stuck in the negative you are getting that pendulum to swing just that little bit more so that your mind can begin to experience the positive. And the more it does that, the more that you are re-educating this filtration system to seek out the positive. Until eventually, the cost of you not changing becomes so much greater than the cost of you actually changing. When you think about the impact of what your loved ones don't get to experience. So if you take that list of 20, you can see for yourself the cost of you staying exactly as you are. You get to see how your loved ones don't benefit by you not changing. And therefore it begins to align your mind with the imperative that your soul is already experiencing. Your soul already knows it wants something different. Your heart knows that it's craving change, but the head's getting in the way. This begins to align the three so that they can begin to move forward together. So hopefully this will make it a lot easier for you to commit to change. Okay, because the change then comes after the commitment. But if we think that even committing to change, even entertaining the idea of change is going to cost those that we love, it's no wonder you're finding it really, really difficult to change, really difficult to get started or finding it really difficult to get momentum. So we're looking at removing the resistance and then you can begin to call towards you people, resources, ideas, opportunities to help instigate and build momentum towards that change rather than fighting yourself and feeling like you're stuck and then subconsciously or consciously blaming those around you. I can't change because of my partner or I can't change because of the kids or I can't change because of X, Y, Z. This puts you back in charge of your own thoughts, back in charge of your own belief systems and back in charge of your own ability to change at will because you can change at will. We just need to shift the filtration system that is saying that it is either completely possible or completely impossible depending on the belief system that we're working with. So I really, really hope this has been a benefit to you. I hope this has been a benefit to you even more than I hope. Actually, no, I hope that you will do the exercise. <laughs> essentially is what I'm getting at. I really, really want you to try this out because you can begin to apply this to any lopsided perception or idea that you have. Okay, whether that's around, you know, finding the perfect partner, shifting excess weight, I'm just picking some of the top ones here, starting a business, whatever it is for you, you can begin to challenge your own ideas and begin to awaken your mind to other possibilities that you haven't experienced because what got you here won't get you there. So you can't solve a problem, this is Einstein I'm quoting, you can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness you use to create it. And so this is about changing 
the consciousness, expanding the consciousness and opening you up to new possibilities, which is exactly what change is. It's new possibilities. Otherwise, it wouldn't be change. It'd just be more of the same. And you don't want any more of that now, do you? <laughs> okay. So thank you so much for joining me and thank you as well if you've watched this on YouTube and you've enjoyed this little experiment. I'd absolutely love to hear from you. So come on over to the blog at blairiana.com forward slash 13 and let me know how you enjoyed this episode. Did you watch it on YouTube? And if so, did you enjoy it? Is this something that you'd like to see me doing more of? Or are you quite happy with me sitting in my dark little room with the microphone up to my face? <laughs> being in my own little bubble talking to empty space because yeah I'm happy to explore either way I'm just open to possibilities as well at the moment so let us move towards new change and new possibility together and if this has been of service to you please make sure that you subscribe on either iTunes or SoundCloud and of course YouTube and I will catch you on our next episode and until then I'm Blairiana and I cannot wait to see you shine your light in the way that only you can. Mwah. Bye for now.